ready. Welcome to episode 39 of the Go Get a Agility podcast. My name is Margaret Hughes, and I'm once again separated from my daughter, but with her via Zoom, <laughs> Emma Hughes. Oh, hi, everybody. Hi, Emma. All right. First off, it was great hanging with you last week. It was very fun. I'm glad we went to a dog show. That was good. We had a good time. All right. All right. So this week, well, let me preface this week's topic with saying that it's about the book developing handling skills. It's a little bit about the book, but I, I want to talk about the three main things that Linda Mecklenburg seems to stress four main things over and over and over again. So uh, we're re- I've, I, I started a book club, I don't know, two years ago. I don't have, it was two years, it was October two years ago, I think, maybe last year, but I think it was COVID. And uh, we never made it through the book. So, or some, I don't know, I, I'm a really bad book club person, but I'm, um, so we started w- with a whole bunch of people doing developing handling skills for awesome, what's the title? Developing Handling Skills for Awesome Agility Teams by Linda Mecklenburg. Uh, we started the book club years ago. I never finished it. I think we got through, I don't know. I think we got through chapters five or six. I was reading much further forward than they were, but um, than we were discussing. And so, but then, I don't know, my life fell apart. I can't remember how. I think I had the heart attack. <laughs> I just, and then I think I started it back up again after my heart attack, uh, and then it fell apart again. Well, my heart attack was over a year ago, so it's been at least two years, if not longer. So, uh, but going to see you, I was determined to finish the book again. So I've read the book sporadically. So I've never read it cover to cover, but I have referenced the book, which is kind of what the book is. It's more of a reference book, um, but. When I started this book club, my goal was to read cover to cover. Well, I did it. I finished the book on the airplane yesterday. And congratulations. I am just thrilled that I finally went cover to cover on it. Uh, so it's I've had it for years. It's a great book. I've used it with all my other dogs, but not in depth reading like I did this time. And with the developing handling skills, also want you to know that I'm also going cover to cover with the mastering jumping skills with Eli. So I started that one um, back when I I knew Eli was coming into my life and I'm probably just over halfway on that. But then it starts to get into a whole bunch of jumping drills. And right now I'm working to get him up to full height before I commence all the big jumping skills. So I'm doing all the foundation jumping stuff, but not the big adding it into a lot of sequencing. So we're still working through the mastering jumping skills. And if you ever want to see any of my uh, prelim work on mastering jumping skills, then it's in all of my videos of 52 weeks of Eli. I've been working my way through the book. So anyway, I wanted to go back to the developing handling skills, which is the one I did the book club on. So there, as I was reading it and, and it's, I kept going back in chapters because I'd forget what I had read. And so I'd go back in chapters and I kept noting over and over again, a theme that she kept throwing through the book. This is very exciting for me. This is called critical discourse analysis. And um, I think it's very interesting that we're doing it on a dog training book. And I will probably be mentioning this to my professors tomorrow saying, oh, yes, we've done critical discourse analysis on a dog book. Critical, um, you're a little fuzzy. Called critical discourse analysis, and it is when you um, read something, so it could be anything from newspapers, um, and most likely it's going to be published, and you uh, take it apart and say things that are right with it, things that are wrong with it. Um, and I'm very excited about this because I think that um, not a lot of agility content is discussed like this, people don't really dive into agility stuff like this, right? They just kind of, oh, yep, read it, do it, let's go on. Whereas you're uh, book clubbing it, and I'm very excited about it. I don't <laughs> I know. Tried I tried to book me. club it. I apologize to all my book club members that I never made it all the way through with discussion. 
But if you, <laughs> I mean, I suppose we could pick it back up. It starts to get into a lot of um, hands-on doing stuff, so which is kind of not really book club stuff. There's a lot of stuff in here that I, I want to make sure that I do do with Eli, um, especially in one, one drill in particular that I'm going to bring to my, um, to my class potentially, but I'm not sure I'll, I'll talk about it, but, um, anyway, so I don't want to say what's wrong with it. I really didn't find, well, I found one thing wrong with it and it wasn't that it was wrong with it. It was that things have progressed in agility different than how she's written about it but well, she does the book published she does preface the book by saying this is a work in progress and she knows that people will take this information and build on it so uh this edition is uh, copyright 2011 okay so it is a little bit old then well a little bit I, little bit um, so yeah there's say that though is it's good that she's prefaced it with saying hey this isn't current. Um, so that is good of her. Yes. Is there um is there any books that if we wanted to do true discourse analysis, also I'll stop shoving the English language thing in um, eventually. Um, have you ever read any book similar to that that you think you could compare it to? No. But I'm not a huge book person, Emma. Uh, well, it's, it's or not even books, it could be you know, uh, training diaries or something that you think are similar content. The content is similar, but their execution of it is different. Yeah. But I guess we're not here to talk about that. We're really yeah. more here to talk about the book itself. and the Yeah, chapters. I don't want to compare. I, I would like the jury to know that I have never read this book. I have not even read the first page. Um, <laughs> so I don't have a lot to add on that front. Right. And, and it is, I'll say that for new people, I think that it's a bit rich for new people because there's a lot of technical know-how on that you know what a front cross is, but she goes into great depth of what a front cross is, right? So in that sense, if you if you took each little section and and it, it, it's great great information. So let me give it to you in well, let me go back to my original thought that there's one theme that runs throughout that book, the book. And that is her belief. And I believe this as well. This is definitely one of my beliefs as well, is that motion is number one in agility. Either forward motion, backwards motion, sidewards motion, mo lack of motion, accelerated, de -accelerated de decelerated motion is number one. Well, I wanted to talk about the foundation skills that she talks about. Her whole premise, her whole handling system, if it's if you want to call it a handling system, is based on six cues. Motion being one, location, shoulders, shoulder direction, eye contact, hand signals, and verbal cues. So jump, dog walk, whatever your verbal cues are, and the dog's name. That would also be considered a verbal cue. I would also add into that. So those are her six. Motion, location, shoulders, eye contact, hand signals, verbals. And and she does put motion at the top, but then the other ones, she likes to use them when they work, right? So it's not just you're using not just one cue, but you're using them in combination with each other. And one that I will add on to that which I think dogs read quite a bit is foot position or your toes, the direction of your toes that they're facing, especially our smaller dogs. I think they really read into um, where your, where your toes are pointing. I really, really agree with but that. But she doesn't that mention, I, I don't remember her mentioning toes at all, or at least not, She's a, um, not prominently. person, right? Uh, yes. Does she have any small dogs? And I'm not saying that I don't know. toes aren't relevant to big dogs, um, because they are, but I do think that small dog people tend to, to utilize, um, foot position a little bit more, or at least in my experience, I don't know if that's true across the board. I don't know. I don't know her dog history, but yeah. yes, I do know that she had border collies. My point being is that, um, I'm about to be critical here real quick. 
Um, and it's not against anybody in particular. It's not against the book, but um, a lot of big name trainers, they're successful, right? And if we think, if we put on our thinking caps for a second, the mo one of the most you know prolific breeds in agility is the border collie and so if you are a high name trainer you'll most likely have a border collie and i do think that a lot of trainers struggle to see past the border collie um bit of bill is that even a bit ability uh border collie is very biddable being i think that's biddable, being, yeah biddable yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but my point being is that um you can write a book about all this right you can do videos or you can do you know web journals whatever and say yes this is how you train the dog to do xyz but if your experience is a border collie i think a border collie would throw itself off of a cliff for you if it meant that you were going to pet it at the end i think a border collie is a lot different from say a dachshund right so yeah, but she does she does um she does give reference to uh, uh so, so she categorizes dogs kind of in two different categories of um large strided well multiple categories so large strided fast yeah slow and short strided so and so long, she stri long strided is relevant to the dog size so exa for example dotty would be in my opinion a long strided sheltie Right. So it's not the actual yards that they're covering. It's how much, how long their strides are, regardless of the dog. No, I think I Dottie would be considered a short strided. No, because I would think that she, for a Sheltie, she is fast. She is right? fast, but you can be short strided and, and she's going to take. I, okay. So I was struggling to understand. One. I was struggling to understand if she meant. As in, so there's two types of Shelties, right? For example, there's a dog, a Sheltie that's very excited to do agility, long strided Sheltie, and a Sheltie that's not excited to do agility, short strided Sheltie. No, I see. No. Okay, so it's different. It's it's she, big and small dogs. Yeah, you're talking more about drive. I am. Yeah. So yeah, I was and she doesn't to she doesn't okay. address drive in developing handling skills. Right. Okay. That's so, that's just want to clear that up for myself. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. she assumes, it seems to me that she assumes that all dogs have some drive to want to do this with their handlers, but some you can outrun like a dachshund and some you can't like a border collie, right? But there can be short strided border collies, right? There are right. some border collies out there that you can beat because they're not quite as driven, Right. Okay, and so you're going back to your point, or I'm going back to your point that you can't always beat Dottie, so you consider her long strided. Maybe yes, I, I don't, don't know. know. I think I don't it, know. yeah, maybe I'd have to go back and reread that part. Well, I'm not saying that that you were was wrong. the part I started two years ago. <laughs> and now I'm quizzing. I'm like, all right, I remember fine. Margaret? Oh, what she said. Uh, um, okay, <laughs> so well, that's I, I don't mind that. Let me give I, you her. I, hold I on, she has an me. appendix. You could lie to me. You could tell me anything. No, and I would believe I, I haven't read the book. So Okay, so she doesn't in her appendix anyway, or in her glossary. In her glossary, she does not reference oh hold on. She doesn't, at least not what I'm finding, short strided, long strided. Let me look up long. I'm not seeing anywhere where she's talked where she gives a definition of long strided versus short strided dogs that's okay so i'm um so for i'm just chilling so i, so I guess it kind of <laughs> depends on your own definition of long strided versus short strided but she did okay. reference short strided long strided fast and slow okay yeah okay all right so i think that i've gotten distracted now three times oh no so motion was her big one and then she uses the cues of motion, location, shoulders, eye contact, hand signals, and verbals in the cue combination. Okay, but I want to talk about foundation skills that she threaded throughout the entire book. So she kept referencing the uh, this this skill um, goes back, harkens back to your foundation skills. 
it, this skill uses this foundation skill. This skill um, works well with this foundation skill. So I wanted to talk about those three foundation skills that she referenced over and over and over again. Uh, so she calls them recall the heels. What, n number one was recall the heels, and there's three of them. And your recall the heels is uh, recalled to collection recalled to extension and recalled to backup. And the collection is what you would do on serpentines, what you would do on a front cross. So it's the dog coming towards you and not bypassing you to the back of you, right? And then a recall and, and right side and left side. So everything that she does, she references talk, working this on your right hand, working it on your left hand. So she's an equal, keeping them equal constantly. So recall to collection is for uh, serpentines, is for um, like front cross on a 270, stuff like that. So, um, and then the second one is recall to extension would be similar to what you would do on a lead out line. And so you have jump, jump, jump tunnel and you want the dog to continue straight. So you're gonna release them out of their start line. That's a recall into extension past you, right? Or at least up to you and then more direction. And then the backup is, uh, I have to, this one, is, this one isn't used quite as often. Um, but would be like a throwback. So a, a throwback or wrap. Um, I have qu another question. <laughs> so you said throwback. Are we referencing the dog or the handler? Um, both. Because I th both. Because the position is towards the dog, mm -hmm. and the dog goes, um, comes into you. I guess collects, that's kind of a silly question. Because yeah. Turns. Turns. How else would you? Because heel needs a handler, doesn't it? Continue on. Okay, but I think that you you. Uh... I'm confused by all the new terms. Well, the backup, the while the the backup isn't the the performance of it may it may is not new to you. So right. you do it I'm all just... the time with Dot, but you probably didn't call it by a name. So she named it. <laughs> no, I didn't all know. right. So and a backup, a me. recall to a backup. Remember, they're all coming into heel. So these are all recalls to heel when you're right. when you're training them. Right. Okay. So the foundation is recalling dogs away from you, dogs coming into you, and either coming into your knee and doing like a 90 degree turn. That would be a recall to collection. A recall to, to extension would be them coming to your butt. And then in the heel position. Right. Wait, does heel position mean sitting by your feet? No, not sitting. Just in, just at your. Just next to you. Just at your side. Okay. Yeah. In fact, she never references sitting. They're always coming into a stand. The last one is recall to backup. And that is the dog. You're facing the dog. The dog's coming into you. They go slightly past your leg, turn into you and land in heel. Okay, so that would be like a wrap, like you said. Right. If you right. were doing like a front cross. Yes, right, right. But you're already now. you're already turn and facing your dog. She must have diagrams of this, right? Oh yeah. Oh my Good. god. It's a the book is three hundred pages long. My goodness. The book is three hundred pages long and it's huge. And it's not it's tiny in some places it's very tiny writing there's no way i could read it without my glasses it's a the book is at least 12 inches by 10 inches it is massive it's like the size of a laptop all right let me give you a let's see a backy uppy that's what she calls it a backy up no she calls it a backy up a specific combination of cues that includes backwards motions towards a jump with shoulders facing the dog, an outside arm signal, and using a verbal jump cue and direct eye contact. So a throwback, right? Or some people call it a butt to wing or an ass to wing. Right? <laughs> I like the way you said it so seriously. Ass to 
doing? <laughs> oh, that's great. Like you're narrating a nature uh, documentary. So Okay, I'm starting yeah. to understand it. So it's really, it's just movements of agility people have come up with over time, right? In course. But once you hit the senior level, you're not going to be going over a book about it, right? No, no, so no, suppose- no, no. This is foundation handling. I know. This well, is- that's what I was about to say. So if you are a new handler, it's quite useful to yes. have a book, to have one place where you know all these things and you can see it. Yeah. Is it the only the only thing is for a new person reading this for the first time with zero agility yeah. knowledge is it's in the weeds. Yeah, it's a little bit. Really, it, she really gets into it and she really describes how to do it. So in one sense, it's awesome. But yeah. in another sense, most new people just want to do the equipment. And this well, is, and I think this maybe is that's handling, what the book... handling, handling. Right. And maybe that's what the book is for, where you go to agility class, right? Your instructor throws out some, you know, course at you or some little tiny sequence at you, right? And you think, well, I'm not too sure about that. And then you go reference the book and you're like, oh, well, that's what we did in class. Here's one downside. You can't get the book anymore. Oh, why? Yeah, it, they discontinued publishing it. Oh, well, how'd you get it? I've had it for years. Oh. I've had it for, I've, I probably got it in 2012 oh, when it first came out. Well, so, so was she, I assumed it was like a self-published book, but I guess she must no, have No, Clean Run published it. And it's really too bad that, that Clean Run didn't publish it. In fact, they, they uh, she references volume two. Mm-hmm. Oh no, that's for the jumping book. The jumping book is volume one. And so it references that volume two. They never finished volume two or, or oh, she finished it. Bad. They never published it. So oh, she should run. self-publish on Amazon. It's like 20 bucks. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's available as an ebook. Okay. So it's available as an, as a, as an electronic book and it's twenty six ninety five on clean run. So that's good. At least it's still available as far as, as a, um, yeah, that's good. And then mm-hmm. let's see what it costs on Amazon. 58 bucks on Amazon for a paperback. Well, my, I, th- I don't know that they weren't ever paperback. Okay, so the foundation skills, going back to them. Recalls to heal, recall to collection, recall to extension, recall to backup. And then she works these with and without jumps. And then she works them exclusively. So then she breaks it into doing all of these recalls um, with serpentine work, directed jump work, 270 work, uh, back up the throwback work, extension work. So lead out lines and then long extension lines of usually straight obstacles and then 180s. So all of those with and without jumps she does on the flat. Then she talks, uh, n- the third uh, foundation skill would be sends. So sends around a single jump stanchion. And she talks about um, adding uh, distance. So forward sends with more distance and then lateral sends. So side on sends for more directed jumping type stuff. And then also with opposing motion, she adds in opposing motion um, within her foundation skills. And then the last one are your uh, four basic turns. So a pull turn, a front cross turn, a push turn, and a rear cross turn. And so the front cross and the rear cross both have side changes. And then the pull and the push are turns with outside changes. And she says, learn those and you are well on your way to foundation, your foundation skills. So, um, so yeah, the only one that I really haven't focused on heavily in my own training with my students is the recall to a backup. I talk about coming in to recall to heal all the time, especially when, when we do a little, um, session on on sends so when we send to a jump we come back into recall the heel position and some of my students um do it quite well and others they don't see the value in it so i think i'm going to hearken more on 
that position because it really helps with your collection and your dog not over jumping you in front cross work, in serpentine work, in 180s work. And so I'm going to add more emphasis on the recall to heal with all of those and put that just a little bit more into my foundation than, than I have. So those are the three foundation skills, recall to heal, sends basic turns. And then nice. she goes into how to take all of that further and further and further and further with more distraction, more distance, more duration on sequences. So that was it in a nutshell, essentially. What else do I have here? Nice. And I uh, actually I had another question oh. for you. Yeah, I want. Uh, wait, to, no, I want... you go first because my question will derail. So okay, you so go there's first. one. So she talks about all the different 180s, 270s, serpentines, um, 90 degree turns. She does a whole chapter section on on all of those. But then she also goes into a pretty good dissection of what she calls the zigzag, the zigzag exercise. And, you know, I've done a variation of the zigzag exercise, but I've never worked it broken down like she did. And some of her reasoning for doing it is essentially to teach the dog to take the obstacle in their path, even if it's slightly offset from the first jump that they came to. <clears throat> and she really goes into, there's whole one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's like 14. No, then she adds in other, other obstacles into it. Then she adds in layering on it. Uh, so there's an entire chapter on the zigzag exercise. And I want to say it's 20, 20 pages deep, if not a little bit more. And so this zigzag exercise is really just going back and reading this alone is I'm glad I did because I want to definitely do this with Eli and I'm going to try and introduce this to my students although it because it's 20 pages that's the the amount of variation that she does with it 20 you know starts basic moves into more difficult and all the way to advanced and so we're talking at least I would say at least five to six sessions, if not more, for just this one exercise. Because the variation on it that she does is brilliant. She brings in tunnels. She brings in double jumps. Um, she then goes into serpentine and backside type stuff. But her whole focus is that on the zigzag exercise is that if the jump or obstacle is in your line of, of view, is in your view, is on, on your line, essentially, or within your line, take it. But if it is not, don't, right? And so then it becomes the handler's job to make sure that the dog's on the line, right? And so, and if it's not on the line, they have to, the handler's is, their responsibility is to cue it, right? Either with line of motion or verbal or hand signal or eye contact or combination of all of those. And so I really like this zigzag exercise and I'm definitely going to be doing it with Eli uh, when he's at his full height. So I may do it when he's lower height, but it's a very, as it advances, it's a very difficult concept for the dogs and the jumping effort becomes very difficult for them because they have to converge with the handler or diverge with the handler. And so just that convergence versus divergence it, it is a lot of jumping effort for the for the dog. And so, and she does several reps on each section. And again, 20 pages of reps, you're talking multiple sessions for the dog. Uh, but it, she's, I really like, it. I like that entire section. I'm glad I went back and saw that and reread it and got some clear understanding of her logic for it and how the dog will view the jumping versus 
how we want the dog to view the jumping. So um, she wants the dog's responsibility to follow the handler's line of motion versus um, taking the line that they may end up on by their their prior jump. So she really goes into it. And I I just for this exercise alone, I would encourage people to get the book and and do just that exercise alone. Although all the training prior to that, all the recall to heal, all the send work, all the all the well, actually the basic turns, the push is the main one that you'll the the dog is going to run into. But even then you're not doing a heck of a lot of pushing until you get to the more advanced stages. Um, but just for this zigzag exercise alone, I would invest in this book. Definitely. So I'm really glad I read it. I'm going to be doing some with Eli. So you could definitely follow me on my 52 weeks of Eli, even though he is now over 52 weeks. I will. Oh, happy birthday to the boy. Yeah. He was uh, a year old on the 16th of November. And so I'll be starting to bring him up in height over the next couple of months. And I hope to keep videoing him. I've really, really enjoyed videoing him. I've really learned a ton. And so I plan on continuing to put these videos out, mostly for, for myself, for you, and for my students. Um, and then anybody else who wants to tag along. Yippee. So that's it, Em. That is what I wanted to talk about today. That's the book. <laughs> I mean, the, the book is super thick. I have given yeah. such a what, what, Cliff Notes rendition of what I think <laughs> was the main topics or the main takeaways from yeah. her. But I got so many good little nuggets. Uh, well, and it's nice to just have something that's always there. Right. I mean, if you're at an instructor's and they tell you something, I mean, those words are gone into the atmosphere. Whereas it's nice to have, you know, a book where you can, you know, take notes and keep your thoughts down. And it's nice. Right. Well, yeah, I should hear. Well, you've marked pages, haven't you? I have. So see all my bookmarks? Gosh, that's and even I, more than me. That's I what I, my books are supposed to look like. Yeah, at uni, I, and they I don't. wrote in the so margins there. and my glossary is coming out. All my pages are falling apart. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I have to tape them back in. So oh, that's fun. It adds character. Yeah, I put a lot of notes in here. Um, I might put up for my Stone students uh, the summary of handling objectives, although I gave my, I, I wrote in that as well. So you can get some of my thought process on it. Um, yeah. But yeah, she essentially takes all of your basic cues, does them all without motion without a jump then she adds motion in then she adds a jump in then she adds motion with a jump so mm, her methodical. process is very methodical it's yeah. very in the weeds it is not for um i mean it's for everybody i think this is what agility should look like i think this is what agility foundation should look like um but some people are going to say i want to just do the a-frame so yeah all right that's all i want to talk about thanks em cool. yeah thank you love you i'll see you uh, in a week yeah i'll see you we'll all be home this time next week i know happy training em i love you <laughs> i'm so excited to see doc guys it's crazy woof, all woof. right i love you bye-bye hey, woof, woof. Woof, woof. ready <laughs>